Hey there, my name is Peyton Macy's and you're listening to AnyCast. AnyCast is about anything and everything. We have some cool guests on sometimes, or sometimes it's just me. But enjoy today's episode and I hope you learn something new. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Any Haunts. Today, we're going to be talking about the Disney Channel special Hansel and Gretel from the uh, Magical Mind of Tim Burton. You know, last week, we started Any Haunts off with uh, Beetlejuice, reviewing that, another Tim Burton film, while well, writers in it, you know, Michael Keaton, really cool stuff, just to close out Warner Bros. 100. It was really fun. And now we have Hansel and Gretel. And this is one that I've known about for a year. I was actually going to watch it last year. I just never made the time to. And I watched it. It's on YouTube. I'm going to link it down below. It's free. And let me tell you, it is really interesting. Um, It's dark and whimsical. And it's bizarre. So the video that I watched, the version that I watched, was the apparently the one on the VHS. And this started with the short film Vincent, which is the technically the first film ever made by Tim Burton. It's not a full-length feature film, of course. It's just a little short film, and it's like seven minutes. And it's a poem, I believe, written by Tim Burton. It's directed by Tim Burton. Um, and it's this stop motion kid named Vincent and this Vincent wants to become Vincent Price and he's obsessed with morbid things like, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. And I think I talked about it last any haunts with Liam from random with Liam a little bit. I can't remember. I think I like, we mentioned it off the cuff in one of our videos. Um, and it was cool to see that again, watch that again on the watch party. If you guys didn't know, I did a watch party with this. Uh, nobody popped up in ch- uh, bleh, nobody popped up in chat, so I'm wondering if it did well. I don't know if any of you guys were there, but if you guys were there, thank you. Um, I had a fun time, even though I was just kind of alone watching that. Uh, I had pretty fun time because once we actually got into this, it was really interesting. It starts off with like a lot of little toys and such. And we're seeing like these toys and these whimsical clocks and such. Like all these just whimsical little toy type things. And then we meet this evil mother. And she actually bites one of her kid's fingers. I thought she bit it off at first. But apparently not. But I was like, okay, dang. We're just kind of going into the dark stuff right off the bat. And you know, Hansel and Gretel. It's definitely one of those that is uh, dark. I believe it's a part of the Grimm's fairy tales, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Hansel and Gretel, is it? I don't know. I'm looking through this book here, and I'm trying to figure out if it is. Uh, I don't know if it is. I think it is. Uh, I'll look it up. But, you know, it's always been a dark, dark story about these two kids that kind of just get lured into the woods and you know they get lost in the woods and then they're lured in by this evil witch and it just kind of goes all downhill from there well this uh version is a little different i would say uh you know it's tim burton definitely um yeah hansel and gretel was a part of uh, the grim fairy tales um so, you know, of course, the same people who wrote Rapunzel and um, uh, Snow White, which are both pretty creepy uh, actual stories. Not like, I guess, dark and morbid is what I should say. But anyways, like the witch bites the kid's fingers off or the kid's finger. And uh, then they have like dinner. And 
it's just the the settings in this are just so unsettling i think uh they're really unsettling to me and that could be in multiple reasons i just think the color scheming and the uncanny feel of this the the, uh, the um obscure tim burton horror style is here very evidently and i think it just all adds to the bizarre horror of this film um and you know we're getting this like the weird like scene and i was actually kind of cringing when we watched this because what happens is they're sitting down for dinner and we learn that there's this like adult man in the room and it's the brother or sorry not the brother it is the kids' father and this evil woman is the kids' mother at first i thought oh maybe they're like orphans in this tale or something no this is their actual mother i don't think it's a stepmother or anything and she's just pure evil and she owns basically everybody uh we see that the father is a slave to her essentially making toys and he's a toy maker um and at this dinner scene they're eating this slop and it's just so disgusting because tim burton keeps on like focusing in on them eating and the crunching noises and everything and the only music in this entire film is like it's good music the score is actually really good because it actually plays pretty well with what's going on on the film uh the music is very much so uh choreographed to fit the timing of certain things in the film which is really nice but it's just a soft relaxing soothing piano and it, it just it's just crazy you know uh it gets really it just gets very creepy when you see this person eating like this greenish slop and there's just this like relaxing music just something creepy is there i don't know what it is it's just something about that is creepy but anyways the kids uh uh one of the kids like takes this uh like a mouthful of it like the second or third mouthful and then like fake pukes it on the toy or on the table i almost said toilet table and then the evil woman oh uh, it just pulls on this lever thing um and a ladder comes down as she says go up to your rooms and they climb up this ladder hands on gretel it is extremely tall it's just weird watching some of the camera angles as they climb up this ladder and it's just so unnerving and then they go to bed but they you know like uh one of the kids says uh as they stare out the window uh they uh she says um in cinderella something about how you know after everything bad happened to cinderella cinderella still sat in her room and looked out i think kind of like what she's doing and says i still have dreams and this is a scene that definitely is more so speaking to the audience like hey this is a very major theme maybe you guys should take note of this so i mean it's not like the best writing in the world but cool you know we're getting a little bit of um, a reference to something else i like when movies and tv does that where they like reference a tale uh, or like a book or something and it's like a morale uh one of my actually uh probably favorite examples that can come to mind of this is in soul from 2020 a pixar film named soul there is a scene when the main character joe finally gets his soul back in the body and that's it that's an entire story but just go with me basically he like fell in a manhole one day and his soul left him and whatever he comes back as a human and he gets his big shot at this jazz club and he does the show and he's like great what's next and the leader of the band she's like well we do it the next night i think is what she said or something and then she tells him this story and it's it had surface level it can i mean it's like a deeper story it's like about the fish in the sea or something it's this little tale and it has a really interesting and powerful morale around it and it's just really cool and then there's like a super sad scene after this where joe goes home and plays piano and is like entire you know life flashes before his eyes and he's just like wow that was my life uh it's an, it's a great movie but today we're talking about tim burton um and so, you know, I like when they do that in films. But anyways, then we see like a toy and it's like a little cute 
clown toy named Jocko. And Jocko's adorable, actually. And we learn that it's actually just the father uh, using a hand puppet of what is he calls Jocko. And Jocko sings them a lullaby and everything. And the kids go to bed. And then we see it's the father. And then the next day they go on a first their first walk. It's the morning. And the mother takes... <coughs> sorry. The mother takes the kids on a walk. And she ditches them in the wilderness, in the woods. Um, they find their way back home because one of the kids was dropping pebbles as a trail to go back home. And they go back home, uh, and the mother is very annoyed by this. The father is very glad of this. And then the next day, the same thing happens. But this time, the mother gives them a gift and says, it's from your father. He made this toy for you, children. And the toy is like this duck. I said that it, it, it like reminded me of the scene in Nightmare Before Christmas when they're painting the duck. Like it didn't look that dark, but it just kind of looks similar. That's what like when I saw the toy duck, I just thought to myself, oh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Anyways, they go out again. <clears throat> they drop down the pebbles and everything. This time the duck starts eating the pebbles that they've dropped because that's how this toy is designed. And the mother knew about this full, like, full well knew about this. And that's why she's like, hey, you got to have this duck out here. Well, they end up getting stuck in the woods, hands on Gretel. They sleep in the woods that night. And this duck turns into a strange and slightly creepy looking robot or something. And it becomes like um, an SOS type beacon. And it's like calling for help kind of they wake up in the morning and they end up uh at the cookie house or the bot actually leads them to the cookie house they go see the uh you know the sweet house i guess what we could call it the sweet house they go over there you know they start eating the house and then one of the kids pulls on a candy cane that's sticking out the window and we hear an owl sound or something like that a character shouting and out uh, the door opens and out comes a witch with a very weird looking witch. You know, usually in Hansel and Gretel, you get like this, you know, kitty cartoonish green witch, like kind of like the witch from Wizard of Oz, where you get this like super pale and creepy, horrifying witch. This version has a witch with almost like clown makeup, like white clown makeup these round sun, uh, gla sunglasses kind of like daredevils just like round sunglasses that are pitch black you cannot see her eyes um you know black pointy hat really long black hair and it almost looks like a male rock star from like the 80s long hair um black robes and everything and a candy cane for a nose very bizarre and she also has a candy cane as a cane. And she has the kids eat and eat and eat. Sorry, guys. I had to take a sip of water. Um, she has the kids eat and eat and eat. And they become stuffed. And she's like, oh, woe is me. I didn't introduce you guys to the housing because you guys were left out there. She introduces them to these marshmallow beds. And it's really nice. And there are these, they go to bed and there's these eyes that pop out uh, above the bed. And so now like the headboard and these eyes make a face. And then these candy cane arms, like sharp pointy fingers of candy cane arms come out from under the bed and start like gripping the kids down. The boy escapes, the daughter doesn't. And it's just like, I was like, whoa, no wonder kids got scared of this because it takes a very dark turn. And at this point, the room is dark, of course, because it's night. There like, might be one night light for lighting, of course. And it's just like, wow, this is pretty, this is just there. You know, it's definitely, I understand why this could scare a child. Um, and so the kid escapes and then actually the kid gets contained by the witch again but the witch actually throws these like cookie ninja stars and i'm just like what is going on the witch is trying to fight the kid with ninja stars eventually the witch catches up gets the kid puts him in the bed 
and then the uh, headboard comes off and it becomes like a mouth and the kid is swallowed and the daughter is just left there. And then we see the kid fall into a room and it's a very Tim Burton-esque, almost like a creature that we would see in Beetlejuice, like some reptilian snake-like creature thing. And it looks like it's it's pointed straight down and it opens its mouth as like it's going to shoot a laser or something. And then this, uh, uh, the scene cuts away, I believe. I, th- I believe at this point the scene cuts away and we see that the daughter is with the witch and they're in front of the furnace and it kind of keeps on cutting back and forth between the kid, which we'll get to the boy, which we'll get to what's happening with him and the daughter. And the daughter, you know, is just kind of there and the witch is like, ha ha ha, I'm going to put it to, um, that was terrible, ha ha. It's kind of cringy. Um, the witch puts it to like heating for children, of course, of course, of course. Typical Hansel and Gretel thing to do. Um, and then the witch is, uh, oh gosh, what what was I going to say? She sets it to the children heating. Oh yeah, and I guess we got to talk about the sun. So this thing opens its mouth that looks like it's going to shoot a laser and actually outcomes what seems to be Jocko just very distorted and not cute anymore very creepy and unsettling Jocko and Jocko is just like eat me to the child and because Jocko's like a gingerbread and the kid like takes a bite of him and then he starts eating him is like oh you don't taste good and then the kid uh throws like when it's just Jocko's head throws Jocko against the wall and Jocko presumably dies, crumbles into like a thousand pieces. Anyways, the kid goes, saves his sister. They troll the queen, or not the queen, sorry, the witch. They kind of like play games with her by like dodging her and everything. She's throwing ninja stars, breaks her um, uh, candy cane cane into nunchucks and just starts whacking, like trying to whack the kids. But the kids are just too smart the house starts to fall apart and everything is going bad for the witch. And then the witch charges and charges and charges and the kids move out of the way, open up the furnace. The, uh, you know, she goes in the furnace, burns alive. The house burns, the house melts. But in this version, the way they get home is a toy that looks like the father might've created it. It's a toy swan emerges from the goop of the house. Cause you know, it's a candy house. So it just kind of melts down to like, you know, goop. And out emerges this elegant swan toy and it takes him back home and the father is waiting there and is so happy. And the father said something that I did not expect him to say. Oh, sorry guys. I had to take another drink of water. Um, the father says this, and I don't know if this was word for word. I don't think it was. He, he says something along the lines of, oh, I'm glad you guys made it back from my test to you or he says something that implies it was a test and then they are all living happily ever after because he's like oh you got rid of her so he was trying to get rid of his wife the entire time his wife was the witch and the only way was by testing the children and seeing how resourceful they would be and if they would kill his wife and they succeed and they have a happily ever after time the end and i'm just like okay i mean That's definitely a way to do Hansel and Gretel. So overall, you know, Tim Burns, Hansel and Gretel was fun. It was cool. Um, Yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. I love the music. Some of the stop motion is just really awesome. Um, It's definitely a watch. I mean, it's not like super scary. It's just weird and obscure and a little bit disturbing at times but not exactly terrifying, you know. Um, and with that being said, that's still kind of all I got um, for Hansel and Gretel. I will tell you guys, you know, regarding this podcast this month, um, we are going to be doing um, a lot of movie, I believe only movie reviews on Wednesdays of Halloween films that I wanted to talk about. A little bit of... Um, true horror crime and such is going to be going on the youtube channel um so for right now it's just like wednesdays will be movie reviews i'm not going to tell you guys ahead of time what we're watching um i will say 
this Saturday is not going to be an album review. So every single Saturday this month, and not including this Saturday, will be a Spooky Saturday album review. And we have three spooky albums to listen to. I'm very excited about these albums. As for this Saturday, there is a movie review that I recorded, I believe, way back in June. Maybe July. I believe June, though. And it is a movie that uh, is pretty terrifying. Uh, I would I would say it's a horror movie in some ways. Like, certain elements definitely play it to be a horror movie. But it correlates with the day that it's releasing. And I was like, eh, why not? So that's going to be fun. You guys are going to really enjoy that movie review. Um, I will be doing a video. I will say this. I do have a video coming out sometime, probably like the middle of October, on the YouTube channel, the main channel, about my favorite Halloween movies. It's either going to be 10 or 15 Halloween movies. Be sure to go check that out. That's going to be really fun. Um, and other than that, uh, Carter Carnival's out. Go, go have fun. Watch Carter Carnival every single Tuesday. Why? Because October 31st is a Tuesday. And I thought to myself, you know what? That's going to work. So every single Tuesday, new Carter Carnival. I will say on October 31st, which is a Tuesday, instead of having a November 1st episode, because that's a Wednesday, October 31st on the podcast will be the entire Carnival carter carnival as an audio series i think it works that way really well like really well and this is going to be probably one of my most well-produced podcast episodes to date because it has music it sometimes might have sound effects voice acting a story just really fun so i'm excited about that to release that for you guys but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys go watch hansel and gretel and i hope you guys enjoy that and of course vincent i mean we spent like the first i don't know five minutes of this thing talking about vincent um and yeah i hope you guys uh, enjoy vincent but peace out see you guys in the next one and have a great day